My name is Micah Kersey, and you're listening to Pro Lacrosse Talk. On Shriver. Snyder with scores! Now it's what? Mike Pinnell scores! Hands off for Rabel, switches hands and scores! Kylie O'Miller showing off those shifty skills. Right off the bat, there's Lyle Thompson! Welcome to Pro Lacrosse Talk, the voice of Pro Lacrosse. I'm Hutton, he's Adam, together we're bringing you interviews with your favorite players and coaches, as well as news from all four professional lacrosse leagues. Welcome to another episode of Pro Lacrosse Talk, guys. We are excited to recap the best of this weekend in Pro Lacrosse. Um, Adam, it's Christmas Eve. Kwanzaa is on Thursday. Hanukkah was yesterday. And then, of course, there's Festivus for the rest of us. Uh, but how are you doing this holiday season? I'm good, man. Excited to see some family and friends going up to Philly today. I'm going to be back in Baltimore with Maddie's family tomorrow. So I'm excited to, to get going, eat some good food, and be around some good people. Yeah, no, nothing like the holidays. I'm here in Virginia uh, with my family as well, so that's, that's nice for me. Um, before we dive in, I, I want to ask you, what's one of your favorite lacrosse-related gifts you ever received for Christmas? There's a couple. You know, I think my first Eclipse goalie head ever when I was in fourth grade is probably near and dear to my heart. To be honest, surprisingly, I still have it, and it didn't crack yet. Uh, it's it died a couple times. Um, the, the screw hole is completely torched. I have to tape it onto a shaft, but uh, that's, that's probably one of my favorites. And then my second favorite would probably be, have to be um, my Craig Catrano uh, MLL poster I got uh, late middle school. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, myself and Dig Tape and Dan Arestia uh, had some back and forth about some old MLL gear, and, and, and I threw out that on Twitter. And uh, that has to be one of my favorites since he was my favorite player of all time. So, Oh, yeah, definitely a legend of the MLL. Um, mine have to be my Brian King super light gloves that I had, royal blue. Uh, they were really nice there to match my team's colors. Um, really lightweight, great gloves to wear, but uh, really not that protective because I ended up breaking my finger, the final practice of my high school career, um, in those gloves. So uh, that kind of ended my high school career. Luckily, you know, I was able to heal up that finger and play in college. But uh, yeah, those were awesome gloves at the time. But, uh, you know, again, in hindsight, probably not the most protective gloves because they were so light. But uh, yeah, that was one of my favorite Christmas gifts. Um, but with that, Adam, let's dive into this fast break. There only had two games this weekend, but uh, they were some good ones. So take it away. Yep, we had, we had a light weekend, like you said, in the NLL, but two good ones. Uh, in the first game, the Thunderbirds defeated the new Rochester Nighthawks in a closer contest than most would have thought, 14-12. to 12. And in a really close game as well, in game two, the Mammoths defeated the Roughnecks on their championship celebration night 8-7 in overtime. So that's your fast break. Now let's hit our quick stick and recap some of the news from around the leagues. Yeah, not too much news from around the leagues, but uh, we do have former Rush defender Brett Mitski uh, signing a free agency contract. Uh, future contract with the Warriors, so a huge gain for them, and obviously, you know, a loss for the rush, but uh, he won't be playing this season because he is a firefighter, uh, so he has training that he has to go this year, uh, but, you know, we look forward to him suiting up for the Warriors uh, in the future. And then in PLL coaching news, Coach Chris Bates joins his fellow coaches uh, in signing an extension to remain with the Archers for two more seasons. Uh, we talked about last week how we expected him to sign that relatively soon, and he signs that uh, this past weekend. And on Thursday, former UVA All-American and ML champion Ben Rubior was announced as head coach of the Atlas. And a very outside-the-box pick in terms of uh, coaches, in my opinion. But uh, let's you know move on from our quick stick and talk about the Ben Rubior hire. Uh, another great hire. He injects some young blood into the PLL coaching pool. He is 33 years old and most recently coached as an assistant with the Cannons in 2018. Um, and prior to that, he coached at Loyola Blakefield in Maryland. A rival to your boys' Latin squad, Adam. Yep. You know, he's had a spectacular playing career with UVA. He was an All-American there. Um, and then, obviously, with the Bayhawks for seven of his eight professional seasons, uh, winning a championship with them. Um, so what do you think of the hire, Adam? I'm excited uh, to see what Ben can bring to the table. Uh, he stated he hopes to be the Bill Belichick of professional across a lofty goal, uh, but certainly a great one uh, to have. I think that probably helped in the uh, the hiring process when interviewing probably with Paul Wright. He's a, Paul Rabel's a big fan of Bill, so uh, that, that's a good person to have in your league. So uh, the dynamic he has with veterans on this Atlas squad will be interesting to see many who he's played with uh, in the MLL like Kyle Hartzell. So I'm really excited to see what he brings to the table. Yeah, I like the hire a lot. Um, I really did think the Atlas would benefit from hiring a defensive-minded coach. I still kind of think, you know, they got to – figure that out. I mean, they have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball, um, but the unit itself had a pretty poor year. Um, and if it wasn't for Trevor Baptiste, it probably would have been a little uglier. 
Um, but, you know, I think you got a lot of voices in that huddle, so uh, no doubt Rubier will be able to connect uh, with his group. Again, like you said, he played with a lot of these guys um, and against a lot of these guys. Uh, and I hope he really comes in and takes charge and they buy into his philosophy. It's another inspired pick by Josh Sims in that PLL advisory board. So um, yeah. kudos to them for, for making this hire. And again, like I said, he, he's a young guy, 33 years old. So hopefully got a bright future in coaching ahead of him. But in some other PLL news we want to discuss, kind of took the Twitter sphere by storm on Thursday. We're going to address the supposed leak of the seventh PLL lacrosse team name and logo. Um, it dominated the discussion on social media shortly after this hiring was announced. So what happened was the PLL Pearl leaked a screenshot of a shirt design with the Water Dogs LC logo on it. And it was taken down because the PLL Pearl was asked by a PLL executive, who we won't name, um, to directly take it down. And then we deleted our retweet, but the image is still out there for you guys to see um, floating around. Um, I was skeptical, actually, when I saw this. I was like... Okay, it's kind of, one, I, I wasn't crazy about the logo. Uh, if you've seen it, it's a dog on like a water droplet crest. Uh, the dog has like a lacrosse stick in its mouth. It looks more like a, a bulldog. Um, and the, the colors are purple and white. And it's more of like a, a lavender purple. Um, but yeah, the, the PLO Pearl was asked to take this down. Um, so that kind of made me think maybe it is real. Um, but I was still skeptical. So I dug further. I noticed that it wasn't taken from the main PLL store. So... It was taken from a Loyalist store, um, which, you know, anybody can create. So I thought maybe this is a hoax at first. Uh, I put out there that, you know, this is the evidence that it might not actually be real. And then Patrick Lyons, who actually took the video, told me that the PLL itself has a Loyalist store. They had used that store initially. Um, they still use it to put designs out there that they want to put on the main store, but they're really just testing them out, which, you know, is actually a smart thing for them to do. But it's very odd that this would accidentally leak on there. But it wasn't the first time that something had leaked. The championship designs had also leaked on there. Um, so somehow the Water Dogs design got put in on that Loyalist store, got taken down pretty quickly. But, you know, Patrick Lyons caught it. And the league is obviously, whether it's real or not, trying to squash any rumors about that team name. Um, so I don't know how you feel about it. Uh, you know, it, it's odd that the name hasn't been announced yet, but we have heard from, you know, some other sources that, Maybe it's a copyright issue that they've been working on, and that's why it's been delayed since Paul did say they wanted to announce the team name in December. Um, so obviously we'll find out, you know, whenever they reveal it, and the Water Dog Gate will be over. But what are your thoughts on this team name and logo, Adam? Yeah, no, it was it was an interesting kind of couple hours there to see the process of how, how this all went down. Uh, when it comes to the name itself, obviously, uh, of all the Barstool names that were discussed, this was obviously my favorite. You were a fan, and uh, we can listen right now to our past podcast episode where, you know, you gave your praises initially. Yeah, I, uh, I know when we were texting off pod, uh, I mentioned the Water Dogs, and you weren't a big fan of that one. But I, uh, I'm not. Uh, but from a, a Philly standpoint, I think it'd be cool if that roster was all Philly guys, and they were called the Water Dogs. So obviously, you were a big fan. I wasn't. Um, I'm still not. Well, I think most most of Twitter. I think I was in uh, the minority when it came to this name. So uh, I have to throw out that uh, that this was one of my favorites, just because hoping that that water dogs uh all philly team uh would happen but no you know it's interesting it looked like um the design wasn't necessarily a finished product yet um so i'm curious to see what happens going forward and if it was a copyright issue um with, with the logo it, it's interesting we, we talked off pot a little bit about the logo and how it differentiated from the other uh six logos we currently have and you know this is the first logo with a lacrosse stick in it um, this is the first logo where lacrosse club is a little bit more prominent uh, on the logo than the others. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if this was an alternative logo, was was the main logo, or maybe just the concept that they had thrown up there um, and it just mistakenly was added to the site. So we'll see what happens going forward from here. No, no more projecting, though. Yeah, no, we won't be speculating on it anymore. You know, we put it out there what people thought. I really think this is probably going to be the name. Um, I think it'd be odd for it not to be this name, but you're right, maybe it isn't the logo, maybe they were testing some logos. Um, again, I, I don't think this might be the final color scheme either, because it kind of looks like, you, you mentioned it, it's unrendered design, you know, it's, the, the light purple is just, 
it's just odd without any other colors with it. So I don't know if this is going to be the final color. Maybe it was just the original mock-up of it, and they're you know we're planning on coloring it in more detail. Um, who knows? Uh, we'll find out sooner rather than later. Um, I don't know if it will come for Christmas, but maybe a little late Christmas surprise or a, a New Year's surprise coming up. But with that, let's take a quick break, hear a word from our sponsor, and then we'll get back into these NLL games. Hey everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast. We've been using Anchor for our podcast since the very start. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place, and better yet, it's free. They allow you to easily record and edit your podcast so it sounds great, and send it out to all the major networks such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and many more. Better yet, they connect you with advertisers so you can start making money from your podcast right away. So if you're interested in starting a podcast, download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. Today's show is being brought to you in part by Stitcher Premium. You can use Stitcher Premium to listen to shows ad-free such as Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, Wolverine the Lost Trail, or our favorite, The Fantasy Footballers. For only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year, you get access to Stitcher Originals, bonus episodes, and comedy albums. Better yet, if you go over to stitcher.com slash premium and use the promo code lacrosse today, you can get one month free. So head on over to Stitcher, sign up, and get your free trial today. All right, welcome back. Uh, let's discuss the Nighthawks-Thunderbirds game to start, Adam. Uh, this was a battle between the old Nighthawks and the new Nighthawks. And uh, 19 seconds in, you had Cody Jamison score, and it looked like you know Rochester was in for another blowout loss, but that wasn't the case. And they outplayed the Thunderbirds for much of the first half. Uh, first four Rochester goals were all unsettled. Uh, they were making the most of their opportunities. I was really impressed by their defense, though, in the first quarter. Uh, they were really making Halifax work for quality opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and Steve Fryer got the starting cage uh, for Rochester, um, as we you expected. Um, we'll see if he starts um, going forward, but solid, solid game from him um, right off the block. Yeah, no, and, and Rochester took a 7-6 lead into the second half, but there was too much firepower on that Halifax roster. Uh, rookie Clark Peterson got it going in the second half and gave them the 9-8 lead, and Halifax eventually pulled away and fought off a late comeback attempt by the Rochester uh, they win 14 to 12, and Peterson finished with three goals and two assists in his Halifax debut. Um, Clark Peterson, welcome to the National Lacrosse League. He had a phenomenal game. Yeah, and uh, one of the highlights of the game for me was Clark's uh, behind the back goal uh, to give him his first uh, career hat trick, which was awesome. Yeah, no, I we were all pumped about about that hat trick. Uh, there was a fan in the stands too who was really pumped. If you haven't seen that GIF floating around, he he was really excited. I, I'm sure we're going to be seeing that GIF used a lot in the coming future. I know we'll be using it because it's just a really excited fan going nuts for every Clark Peterson goal. Um, And then I have to give a shout-out to Luke Magnin's rusty gate check on Chris Willman uh, with a short pole. It was just absolutely filthy. Um, It occurred right as the Nighthawks called a timeout, so it really didn't make an impact on the game, but made for a great highlight. Yeah, absolutely. And we can't forget to mention, too, some of the milestones that happened in this game. Uh, Ryan Benesh is now ninth all-time in NLL career scoring um, with just over 1,000 points, uh, 1,014. He sits behind uh, some, of, some of the legends, you know, the Mount Rushmore of NLL, Shane Williams, Gary Gate, Sean Evans, Josh Sanderson, Colin Doyle, Dan Dawson, John Grant Jr., and John Tavares. So good company to be in for sure uh, for Ryan. And then on the Nighthawks side, veteran defenseman, uh, Jay Thornburt won 11 of 30 faceoffs. Passes Jeff Snyder for first all-time in NL history. Now stands alone with 2,652 career uh, draw wins. Yeah, no, you know, props to both of them uh, for some big career milestones. And uh, also, how great is Cody Jamison mic'd up? I mean, he gave a great pump-up speech before the game and then a nice speech after that the Thunderbird social media shared. Uh, the leadership of him and Hasek, who had a great day also, it was just really special. And I, that's why I think this Thunderbirds team, you know, could really make some impact in this East uh, division. You know, I think, you know, they're going to have some tough tests facing them going forward. But, uh, you know, I liked what I saw. I liked how they kind of battled the adversity throughout the game. Um, and, you know, they came out with a win, and that's what's important at the end of the day. But uh, let's go to another game that was phenomenal. Uh, it was the game of the week. And it did not disappoint. And it was the Mammoth versus the Roughnecks. The Roughnecks raised their championship banner prior to their home opener. 
Um, but the celebration was spoiled by an overtime win from the Mammoth. Uh, this game was a classic. Defensive battle from start to finish with both teams getting great goalie play and really forcing each other to work for these goals. Uh, it also included quite possibly the goal of the year so far. Chris Wardle's behind the back pass to Dylan Kinnear, who went behind the back as he was falling down uh, for his first of the year, was just absolutely nasty. Um, that goal landed him at number three on Sports Center's top ten. Um, and again, I don't know if that's going to be topped uh, this whole year. Um, I'm sure there's somebody else out there that's going to you know, have another highlight-worthy goal, but for right now, that's my goal of the season. Yeah, this one was back and forth from start to finish, you know, at the end with less than five minutes left when it looked like the Mammoth had the rough next on the ropes. Uh, thanks to that diving goal by Kyle Killen, Dan Taylor notched a tying goal less than 30 seconds uh, later. So the game obviously would need to go into overtime with the winner coming off of uh, the stick of Jordan Giles, loose ball and breakaway goal after seven hard-fought minutes of OT. Yeah, no, a, a great game um, and, you know, a disappointing loss for the Roughnecks uh, on their banner celebration day. Um, you know, they, they played well. I mean, it, they just didn't seem like they could really get that scoring and that makes me have to ask, do you think they missed the presence of Dane Doby? Whenever you lose uh, the reigning NLL MVP to your squad. I, I don't think you can kind of understate the fact uh, of his missing, uh, the, uh, of the Roughnecks missing his presence. And I will say, too, um, my fantasy pick of the week last week uh, was Curtis Dixon. And, you know, he, he held his own out there for the goal and assist on, on, on the day. But, you know, I think uh, the Mammoth were able to attack that side of the, the uh, field because, uh, of that missing presence of Dane Doby. And, you know, um, we had another awesome um, battle between goalies and Dylan Ward um, and Christian Del Bianco. So, you know, it, it was another great battle in cage, and, and Dylan Ward came, came out victorious in that one and in the saves um, category as well, but not to fault um, Christian at all. He played a fantastic game against a tough opponent. Yeah, no, I mean, another great goalie duel. I, I, that's – Another great goalie duel. We knew uh, that's what we would be getting with this game. Um, and as you mentioned, Dylan Ward, a phenomenal day. He really stifled that Calgary offense. And he had 46 saves on 53 shots and only letting seven goals. A phenomenal day in cage for him. And, you know, another second game of the season where he really came up big, uh, this time on the winning end. So, yeah, two great games this weekend. Uh, you couldn't ask for two better games for a, a relatively light weekend of NLL lacrosse. Uh, let's talk about some of these top fantasy performers this week. In cage, you had Dylan Ward, who had 9.75 points. And uh, then his opposing goaltender, in Christian Del Bianco, he had 8.25 points. Uh, for forwards, you had Ryan Banesh with 8.25. He led a group of forwards that was also rounded out by Holden Katoni with 6.75 points, Cody Jamison with 6.5 points, and Sean Evans with 6.25 points. And then on the transition and defensive side, you had Graham Hosick, who had 7.75 points and Zach Courier, who had 5.25 points. So those are your top performers. And then, Adam, you picked Curtis Dixon for your epic lacrosse fantasy lock, and he got you three points. A bit underwhelming, but, you know, still solid numbers from a guy, uh, you know, who we knew would have to have a big game if they were to, to win. Um, and unfortunately, they did not get the win, but he did get you three points. And then my epic lacrosse fantasy lock was Christian Del Bianco, and he got me 8.25 points, so I bounced back from last week's pick. Uh, but now that we're heading into Week 5, Adam, who is your epic lacrosse fantasy lock for this weekend? Um, based off of uh, his squad's play and the team he's facing, I'm going to go with Mark Matthews of uh, Saskatchewan. Uh, they're playing the new look Riptide, who are 0-2. It's the Riptide's first home game uh, uh, of the season, but it is the second game uh, of the weekend that they're going to have to play during back-to-backs, and the Rush squad um, is going to look to bounce back. Um, after starting one and one, and I think Mark Matthews has played well thus far, and I think he's going to have a big, big game against this expansion franchise. Oh yeah, I, I like that pick a lot, um, especially you know playing the Riptide on short rest. Um, but I'm going to take Dan Dawson in the Rocks matchup against the Nighthawks. Um, you know, I think the the Nighthawks played better this weekend, but I still think you know in Cage they they have a few questions. Uh, you know whether they go with Fryer again or. Maybe go back to Wendy, but I think they'll stick with Fryer probably just based on this last game. But um, I expect Dan Dawson to have a solid day and really build on his success so far in Toronto. So uh, he's my epic lacrosse fantasy lock. Lock it down. 
All right, so those are our Epic Lacrosse Fantasy Locks. Let us know your lock by tweeting us your picks using the hashtag Epic Lacrosse Fantasy Lock. Um, be sure this weekend when you fill out your roster, we are going to specify which games uh, for each player. So there are a, a few teams like the Roughnecks, uh, Riptide, and Seals that have two games this weekend. Uh, so when you go to select any of those guys, uh, for example, let's say you're selecting Westburg, you will have to choose between Westburg Game 1 or Westburg Game 2. So just make sure you know uh, when you are selecting your roster which game you are choosing for that player. But that is your fantasy lacrosse segment for this weekend. Uh, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor, and then we'll get into our pick and roll, Adam, and make some game picks. Today's show is being brought to you in part by Stitcher Premium. You can use Stitcher Premium to listen to shows ad-free such as Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, Wolverine the Lost Trail, or our favorite, The Fantasy Footballers. For only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year, you get access to Stitcher Originals, bonus episodes, and comedy albums. Better yet, if you go over to stitcher.com premium and use the promo code lacrosse today, you can get one month free. So head on over to Stitcher, sign up, and get your free trial today. All right, so welcome back. It's time to do the pick and roll. Uh, I went 1-1 one and one this weekend. Adam, you were 2-0, and oh, thanks to that overtime win by the Mammoth. Uh, you are 8-4 and four overall. I am 7-5, and five. Uh, so the tie is broken, uh, but I'm still right there with you. Uh, even though we only had two games this past weekend, uh, this weekend we have a full slate of games on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, so let's start off on Friday with the Riptide versus the Black Wolves. Who are you picking in this one? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Black Wolves in this one. They've, they've had a fantastic start to the season. I think a lot of us in the analyzing community really overlook this squad going into the season, and uh, they've really shown out so far, uh, especially Doug Jamison, you know, in, in cage. Um, he looks like he's propelling him to the top of the goalie ranks thus far this season, and he's really shown out, so I can't pick against the Black Wolves this early in the season. All right, yeah, I'm going to take the Black Wolves as well. Uh, you know, they started off 2-0, and and then they're playing, you know, a weaker squad in the Riptide. Uh, and I expect Callan Crawford to have another big day. And then later that day, we have the Roughnecks taking on the Seals. Who are you picking in this one? You know, I think I'm going to pick the, the Seals in this one. I know uh, Calgary uh, is it might, would be going on a skid um, if they were to lose this one, but I think they're going to have to travel to, to San Diego for this one. It's a long trek. Uh, the Seals looked uh, improved last week, and uh, I'm excited to see what they have in store this week. So um, if they can get some good goalie play early on, um, in opposed to what they did last week, uh, I think this will be a competitive game, and I'm going to take the Seals. All right, I'm going the opposite way. I'm picking Calgary, and I, I think Marshall King is going to you know, have continued success in his rookie campaign. Um, so they're my pick uh, for that game. And then on Saturday, we have the Rock versus the Nighthawks. Adam, who are you picking in this one? I'm going to have to take the Rock in this one, you know, despite the close uh, loss uh, against Cap against Halifax last week. Um, I think this Nighthawks team is improving, uh, but I think the Rock are, are kind of leaps and bounds ahead of them um, when it comes to their overall roster construction and how they've been playing as a team thus far. And, I, you know, I like Tom Schreiber, um having another big game. Statistically, he's been super consistent thus far in the season, and I expect that to continue going forward in this one. All right, yeah, I'm going Rock as well. And uh, like I said in fantasy lacrosse, uh, Dan Dawson is my pick. So I think he's going to you know, have the biggest role on this one. And our next game, we have the Red Hot Mammoth taking on the Swarm. So, Adam, who do you like in this one? Yeah, the next two games are, my, um, are the two that I'm most excited about starting with this Swarm Mammoth game. You know, I think this is going to be a really close contest. Mammoth coming off a huge victory. This will be the biggest contest thus far for the Swarm. Um, I'm going Swarm in this one, I think, that offense. Um, it is so strong. We're starting with Lyle Thompson, who I think is going to have a big game. Um, it's going to be a close one. Dylan Moore is going to have, have a big one, but I think I'm going to have to take the Swarm in a, in a close victory. Yeah, I'm actually going to go Mammoth. Uh, you know, they've really impressed me the first two games of the season, uh, despite being 1-1. One and one. Um, and again, you know, I think you mentioned the difference makers to me is going to be Dylan Moore and Cage. You know, he's given them such a presence in net this year. Um, you know, that we've really come to see from him the past four years uh so you know i really like him to have a big day and the mammoth to hand the swarm their first loss of the season and then also on that saturday we have the thunderbirds taking on the bandits um who do you like in this game between the undefeateds 
Yeah, you know, I think this is another game I'm super excited about uh, watching on BR Live. Um, I think this is going to be another close contest, but I'm going to take the bend into this one. Um, that, uh, I think Dane Do- I think Dane Smith's going to have a big game to continue uh, his successful season thus far, and the Bandits are, are going to get a win in Bandit Land. All right, I think this is going to be a, a true test uh, for the Thunderbirds team, and I think they're going to overcome it. And I mentioned earlier, you know, Cody Jameson is really looking up where he left off in uh, Rochester now, you know, that they are in Halifax and really leading this team. So he's going to be uh, my biggest role player uh, for this weekend. And then another game we have on Saturday is the Rush versus the Riptide uh, in the Riptide's home opener. Uh, it is also the game of the week for the NLL. So who do you like in this one, Adam? Yeah, you know, we talked a little in the fantasy pick em section. Uh, I think Mark Matthews is going to have a big one um, in a victory against this Riptide squad. I know it's their first uh, home game um, of the season. This will be their first game playing in Nassau Coliseum, which will get the guys juiced up. Um, but this is going to be the second game on short rest, back-to-back. They're going to have to travel despite traveling home. I'm going to have to take Saskatchewan in this one. All right, yeah, I think you mentioned the short rest uh for me, is a, a big issue. So uh, I'm taking the rush as well. And I want to see, uh, you know, Ben McIntosh uh, really have a, a big day. He's, he's been fine uh, for this team so far, but he, I'm expecting him to maybe have a breakout day against the Riptide. And then our final game on Saturday is the Wings versus the Roughnecks uh, at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Adam, who do you like between these two squads? And as much as it hurt, hurts me to, to say it, I'm going to have to take uh, the Roughnecks in this one, I think they're going to be angry after their earlier loss, which I picked uh, at the beginning of the weekend um, against this wing team who, who looked solid um, early on against the Swarm last week, but it, it just kind of fell apart later on in the game. So I'm going to have to take this veteran um, Roughneck squad to get get a victory that weekend. And I think Curtis Dixon's going to have a big game. I'm, I'm sticking with my fancy pick em, guys. True to the end, I'm going to have to take Curtis in this one again. All right, I'm 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 actually going uh, wings in this one. Um, you know, I think the Roughnecks might be a better squad on paper, but, you know, you can't ignore the talent from this wings offense. And I think Big Cat himself, Kevin Crowley, uh, is going to have a big day. Uh, I think, you know, for me, it was the short rest again for the Roughnecks, having to play a 10 p.m. Eastern game in San Diego and then fly back home. Uh, on Saturday to play another game it is going to be too much for them to handle, so that's why I'm going wings in this one. And then that brings us to our final game of the weekend on Sunday. The Seals take on the Warriors. They have a nice little day of rest in between their games. Um, so, Adam, who do you like between the Seals and Warriors squad? Yeah, I, I think the Warriors are going to come out rested. Mitch Jones is going to have a bit another big game who to, to propel his early candidacy for NL MVP. Um, NLL MVP, and I'm going to have to take the Warriors in a victory. All right, I'm going Seals. Um, you know, I, I think uh, they've kind of, you know, had a few disappointing games so far. I think they're they're definitely missing, you know, some big guys. Uh, but I think the Warriors is a good matchup for them to kind of get back on track. Uh, and, you know, I, I like the veteran himself, Brody Merrill, to really have a, a big day in this one. Um, but those are our game picks we're, wa- we're looking forward to watching these matchups, and uh, we're also looking forward to, you know, bringing in the new year uh, with uh, with a big piece that we're working on. We're working on the top moments of the decade uh, with a lot of people in the lacrosse industry. So it's not just me and Adam, you know, coming up with these these picks for the moments of the decade. We have a lot of people, uh, you know, that have contributed to this article, and so that will be up uh, next next week prior to New Year's Eve. Uh, and then we have upcoming interviews with Denver Outlaws goalie Kai Uemoto coming up as well as Cannon's attackman, Mark Cockerton. Uh, so we want to remind you guys to you know make sure you, you look out for those and subscribe. Uh, we also want to remind you to check out our Design Tree store. Uh, we have several designs, including our most recent design, Goat Jr., which honors John Grant Jr. and the teams he's played for over his illustrious career. You guys can get 20% off that design still if you use the code HOLIDAYS at checkout. Uh, so go ahead, Design Tree, that's D-S-G-N-T-R-E-E.com. Search Pro Lacrosse Talk. Find our branch and uh, go ahead and check out our store. But with that, let's go into overtime, Adam. And we're going to mix it up a little bit since it's a holiday themed episode. What is on your wish list for this week? Yeah, you know what? I, I think I'd have to go with uh, the announcing of that seventh PLL team name. Super excited uh, to see 
um, what that's going to be if I if I get my wish granted and it's the water dogs. We'll see what happens, but that's going to be on my wish list. Yeah, no, I, I like it. Um, and I, you know, that's definitely on my wish list too. Uh, probably at the top. Um, but throw another one out there. Uh, I don't know if this is going to happen. I don't even know if the PLL is allowing. I don't even know if the PLL is allowing uh, trades right now. But to shake things up. I would like maybe Drew Adams getting traded to the Chrome prior to the expansion draft, so that way the Archers actually get something out of one of those goalies because they can only protect one of them. So they're going to lose one of them in the expansion draft unless they trade him. So this is a long shot from me, but uh, it's on my wish list to see some big shakeup trades prior to the expansion draft, whether it's a Drew Adams going to the Chrome or you know really any trade that might you know shake up this market just because you know. Teams have some tough decisions on who they protect, and I like to see some of them maybe trade some of those guys prior. That way, they can get something of value for them uh, rather than just losing them in the expansion draft. So, uh, you know, I don't know if we'll see that. I don't know if the trade window is open. You know, the last time during the summer, the PLL announced that there was a trade window. So we know that there are only specific times that they can make trades. But uh, that's what I'm I'm hoping for on my wish list in terms of the PLL. Um, you know, again. I do want to know what this seventh team name is. We're tired of speculating, uh, especially if it is the Water Dogs LC. You know, just tell us. Um, you know, again, I I don't think it's on their end. I think it's probably some behind the scenes, like we said, probably some some copyright things, some legal things they're running through uh, first, and that's probably why the announcement's been delayed. But um, you know, we're just anxious to know. So hopefully, we find that out soon. Um, but that wraps up episode fifty one. Uh, happy holidays to everybody. We really appreciate you listening. We hope you enjoy this episode. Uh, please subscribe. Consider leaving us a review if you really enjoyed it, Um, and we hope you tune in next time to Pro Lacrosse Talk.